Hello there, my name is Anthony Barocas and welcome to Stream Tech. Today, I want to talk to you about putting NDI cameras on your YOLO box. Thanks for joining me. As always, just launching this channel. So like, subscribe, let's get that subscriber count up. And if you find this video useful, share it so others can learn from it too. That helps me a lot. Thank you. All right, let's get started. So what I have here is I'm going to use live streaming technology and live switching technology to talk about live switching technology. I have the YOLO box ultra right here over here. I have an eight inch Amazon Kindle, which is a very affordable Android tablet that I have just, I really like they're built very durably. They're available and you can use instructions on the web to be able to put the Google Play Store onto these tablets and make them useful as regular Android tablets. So I think I paid $69 for this. So it's a very affordable way of controlling other devices using standard apps. I will also be talking about the OBSBOT. This is the Tail Air, and it has been activated with NDI. NDI is not free on the Tail Air. It's an additional uh, activation license. This one has already been activated. Over here, I have the Mevo Start. This one comes complete with NDI already activated. So you don't have to pay an extra licensing fee to activate this. These are two wireless cameras. Let me hold it up here. You can see this camera is very small. I can hold it in my hand. It's a little warm right now, but it's got a single fixed lens in front. It's got a tally, which to you looks purple because it's actually green. So the green is being keyed out and you see the color behind me. Uh, on the back, there's three LEDs showing me by battery power, charging, uh, there's a headphone input, and then a micro SD for uh, internal recording. The OBSPOT, is much the same. And I will be making a video just on these. You have your power indicator on the front because again, the battery's built in. It has a micro SD card slot. It has, actually I can come over here. It has the micro SD card slot down here. There is an HDMI out. This is a 4K camera. The Mevo Start is an HD camera. Although I speculate it has a 4K sensor because when you crop in on it, it still looks really good. Uh, this one, has, as you can see, a tilt, a swivel and tilt lens. Now it's a PTZ, but the Z, again, this is a fixed focal length camera. There's no optical zoom in it. So you're able to zoom by cropping in on the image. On the other side of this is an audio input. There are two microphones on the front and then continuing around, there's a USB, there's a USB-C on the back. And again, there's the audio input and your built-in microphones. There's one here and there's one further around on this side. So as the camera moves around, it can get sound from more than one direction. There's a light right here, which uh, looks like on the camera, it looks like it's turquoise. It's actually green. And then there's uh, three blue lights down here for your battery strength. And that is all the, in uh, well, there's a little bit more on the bottom. There's a quarter 20 thread, although I'm just gonna have it sitting on the table. And there's also um, pins to talk to a uh, additional battery slash 360 degrees swivel base. Um, this was provided for me to review to streaming media. I'm doing this in addition to that. Uh, they have not paid me for this review. I actually own the Mevo Starts purchased them myself. Uh, they are not paying me for this review. YOLO Live and um, Amazon, nobody's paying me. I actually own these products. So uh, with that disclosure out of the way, let me continue on. So let's go back overhead. We have our YOLO Box Ultra, which is the one with NDI. You can also tell it's got the four HDMI inputs, HDMI out and everything. You know what we're gonna wanna do is we're going to want to see the the output of this. So I am going to connect it to the output cable so that that's available. Uh, I am not connecting anything else to this because it's on Wi-Fi. It's connected on, uh, you can see right there, it says uh, Wi-Fi 5. I mean, maybe you can't see that. I cannot dim it any lower. That's as low as it gets on brightness. It is a very bright screen, but the dimming capability on the Ultra is like between here and here. It doesn't get very dim. Whereas if we go to 
the go away go away if we go here you can see I can get this one quite dark and quite bright so the the dimming capability on the Android tablet which is considerably thinner <laughs> is uh, much more dramatic so one of the things we're going to do first is I want to show you that I have uh, the Mevo app it's going to boot up and then the camera is already on you can see right there it says the battery is at 77% it's in NDI mode it's on my local Wi-Fi let's connect alright now you can see this is the control interface for the Mevo Start. Let me point it more at me. It is live. This cropped view that you can move around live is what is being sent. You can see that little window right here and there's the audio from the Mevo as well. You can zoom, you can crop, you can pan, there's automatic tracking. This is not a Mevo video, but I want to show you that that is what's going on. Over here you see it says NDI. If we go into our tools, into the gear settings, scroll down here, NDI mode, 1080p, 15 megabits a second, and it gives me the URL for that. So NDI is on. It is streaming, but it is streaming over NDI. And again, NDI is built into the Mevo, there's nothing else connected to it. That tiny little box includes the battery, microphones on top, your cameras in the front, your white, your tally is here, the battery is in here, the camera is in here, your networking is in here, it's all included. Both of these devices, I should say, also have the ability of being tethered. You can use the USB-C out on either of these and use USB-C adapters so that you can have them on a network. Uh, a wired network and that can be critical in situations where your Wi-Fi there's a whole lot of RF going on putting them on a wire gives you the same capability but more reliability so that is the Mevo now if I come if I exit this let's go to the tail air for whatever reason, it always starts in vertical mode. And then when we connect to the camera, it's going to go to horizontal mode. The Logitech at least has figured that part out. And that one always works in horizontal mode, even when connected to the cameras. The, the OBSBOT, not so much. OBSBOT kind of looks like a similar interface. And in that, you can have your different presets I'm looking for the zoom. Here it is. It kind of works the same way. You see what I'm doing? I can move that shot around. It'll slowly pan with a soft move. So this way you can actually create online moves that are dynamic and happen in real time, even though that is not optically zooming it is just doing a crop on the sensor and you can always see the whole sensor so if you go to your multicam you know the advantage of that is you have your close-up and then you can cut to your wide shot you can go to your close-up and go to the wide shot so you always have that ability to go to your wide shot because it is always capturing the wide shot it's the same for both of these cameras over here this little icon you can't quite make it out because I don't have this these don't do video out this little icon is like a little crosshair. You bring this up and this is actually your motion control. And you can move it around. You're physically moving the head. Let's go to the camera shot. You can see that I am physically moving the head when I do this. So this is different than the optical zoom in that when you do this, you're physically moving the camera. So you can't have this shot and that shot on at the same time because it has to physically move the head whereas your zoom is always capturing everything so you can let's come back over here to the overhead you can pan it over here and then say this is p1 oh no it's going to p1 pan it over here press and hold update that's p1 and then if i want let's tilt down here tilt down a little more tilt up a little more that's going to be P2. 
So I've got P1 and P2. Now, the key thing to note is I'm doing this on the tablet because that capability is not in the Ultra. The Ultra is able to receive over NDI the camera video, this, this little subset window of what I'm capturing. It's not able to control the camera. It's only accepting the video. So I'm able to use the tablet here in conjunction with my YOLO box to control the presets. And if you had three cameras, I would highly recommend three tablets. Have one tablet for each camera, especially if you're going to be changing the shot, because there's too much time to exit one camera, move over, connect to the other camera, change the shot, come back out, change over, come back in, change the shot. There's just too much time. When you want to change the shot, you need two, go to there, three, zoom in. You need to go between those cameras very quickly, and that's why I would recommend having a tablet de dedicated to each camera. And yes, it's almost another $100, but it's definitely worth it. So let us go into the YOLO box. One important thing you need to know about activating NDI on the YOLO box Pro is that NDI is a technology that's incorporated into it, but you need to pay a license fee. Well, actually YOLO Live has to pay a license fee, but you have to pay it through YOLO Live. So when you first go to use it, you're gonna get a screen like this, and it tells you, you can activate it, you can test it out, you can try it for five minutes at a time, and then those NDI devices will stop working. Currently, the fee is $99 to activate NDI for your YOLO Box Ultra. It is only for that particular device, that particular YOLO Box Ultra. If you have a second YOLO Box Ultra, then you'll need to pay another $99. However, it's not per connection. So you can connect multiple devices, your output, all of it is activated with the single fee. So once you pay that $99 fee to activate NDI on your Ultra, then all of the features become available. We're gonna go into that. We're gonna say, yes, I know there's updates. We're not gonna do that right now. We are going to create a new title. We're gonna call this NDI. Check, do it. We're gonna go into that show. So now, if you're familiar with the YOLO box, you know that little add video source right there. That is what you're going to be looking at. We're gonna click on that. And then down here, right there, it says NDI. That is how we're connecting the camera because again, we are not using cables. We are using Wi-Fi here in the office. And as I've always said, when you're using Wi-Fi for connecting your devices, bring your own Wi-Fi because the Wi-Fi is essentially bringing your own cables. You're not gonna trust whatever cable somebody else has. Don't rely on whatever Wi-Fi might be at the location. First, it might be not great. Secondly, there's a lot of other stuff on it you can't control. Third, it may be protected because if it's public Wi-Fi, they may have it isolated so that the different devices can't see each other. You'll connect all your devices to the Wi-Fi and nothing will work. So bring your own Wi-Fi. So you can see my two cameras right there, the Mevo Start and the Tail Air are both available. You cannot select all of the devices and bring them in all automatically. So we're gonna go with the Tail Air first because that's the one I have loaded up on the Android tablet. So I say done, there it is. Now you can see I've got my video source and it is just like any other camera, it's there there will be a little bit of delay in terms of compressing it, sending it over the local area network and then having it uncompressed in the tablet. You're gonna have a little bit of delay. The camera you're seeing here, this is hardwired HDMI into this switching device. The camera you're seeing down there is overhead hardwired into the switching device. So there's no difference in the two cameras that are filming these two things, but there's a difference between this camera and the OBSBOT going through the Wi-Fi. So when I move my hand, oh, now it's gonna track me because tracking is on. Turn tracking off. Nope, tracking is still on. I said turn tracking off. Thank you. We're not gonna get into that. We'll get into that with the OBSBOT review. What I have done is I have added the NDI camera here. Let's go overhead. 
I have the camera here. I have access to the actual camera over here because in here, if you select the gear icon, you can do various things in the YOLO box, but what you can't do is you can't control the camera. You can't assign presets. You can't move it. You can't crop it. You can't move the crop around. You can't do any of that. You also can't adjust the camera settings like exposure and things like that. So you're going to need another device. That is key. Even though you may be able to do some of those things over NDI, like pan, tilt, zoom, you can do over NDI, not in the YOLO box, but also the other camera features you're only going to be able to do with the camera app. And that is key to having a separate device to do that. So I could do a chroma key on that, flip horizontal, flip vertical, rotate 90 degrees. I could, you know, flip horizontal if I wanted to. There you go. Now I'm looking in the correct direction. That really doesn't me, I'm not really doing anything in the YOLO box to actually change what the camera is delivering. If I want to change what the camera is delivering, go to P2, go to P1, go back to P2, I'm going to need that other tablet. Let us add the Mevo Start. Same way, you hit plus, you come down to NDI, it's going to, again, search the network because it has to do this every time to say, ask around, what else is out there? And it's going to show me all my choices. I already have the tail air but it's, not, it's still gonna show it to me. So again, you have to be aware of what you're adding. We're gonna add the Mevo, done. You can see now the Mevo is right there and you can see it is a very different color than the OBSBOT camera. I may have uh, been messing around with the color over there. So what I need to do here is I need to come out, close this, go into my Mevo camera. It's probably gonna take me back to the, nope, it didn't take me to the login screen. And here I can move the camera. Let's bring that up over here. I can move over here. I can move down here and I can kind of do the same thing. I can say over here and if I press and hold this, you see a little plus comes up. So I'm going to plus that and what that's going to do is that's going to add it to my list of cameras. This is what's on air. This is static and this is my wide. So again, the wide is always available. I can always cut to the wide. There it is. And then I can cut to that close-up shot that I created. Cut back to the wide. Cut to the close-up. Now, if I want to close this, I want to create another one just close on me. I can press here. Oh, don't trash it. Oh, I, what I did was I moved it. Uh, don't do that. Let's go back to the wide. Zoom in just on me. Now you can see, here's my other camera preset right there. I, I had mistakenly dragged that. I'm going to press hold here. It's going to say, there's the add, new static shot. There we go. Now I got my two shots. I go to the multi view and I can see here's the shot of my equipment over here. Here's the shot of me. Here's the wide shot. So it's very cool to be able to have these different shots available as different presets. And you can see as I tap it, it just pops up over here. Again, there's a slight delay. And if I go to the wide shot, you can see there's a little bit of delay between the camera over here and receiving it in the YOLO box. That's very key that you understand that. And lastly, I wanted to show you that you can come in here to your color controls and all of your different settings, exposure, camera mode, auto, auto brightness, contrast, saturation, all of that is available in the camera app, not in the YOLO box. Got it. And that is going to be a very important differentiator as to why you need that second tablet. Adding NDI devices to your YOLO box is very handy. You can add up to three at this point, but you're going to want to be able to control them. And for that, you're going to need a second device. Now, bringing in NDI cameras is very useful because you're leveraging the built-in. Uh, now, bringing in NDI cameras can be very useful, but you also have to be aware of a couple caveats. If the rest of your cameras are wired, the NDI cameras are going to be a little bit behind 
your wired cameras. There's going to be an additional delay. So I always recommend taking these cameras and pointing them at the audience, at different other areas that aren't the same thing that you're gonna cut from. So if you're gonna come from the speaker on stage and you wanna show the audience, nobody's gonna notice a two frame delay from your little PTZ camera or your standalone smart. But if you've got a wide shot and a, you know, if you've got two cameras looking at the stage and then you're gonna to cut to a close up of an operated camera over a wire, people are going to notice a little bit of delay. Secondly, if you're going to go with all of these NDI cameras and bring your audio in directly into the YOLO box, your audio is not going to be in sync and you're going to need to use the audio delay right here in the audio mixer. There's a slider down the very bottom here that I'm moving. This is where you can add milliseconds of delay. Each frame is about 30 milliseconds at 30 frames per second. So. If you want to set two frames to delay, there's one frame, 60 frames, 60, about 60 milliseconds is two frames of delay. You might need to add more. So do a test. I always say test multiple times, test, 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 and then figure out what looks good. Do a recording, play it back and see how that audio matches up. Additionally, one way you could match your audio to your NDI camera is to plug your audio into your NDI camera and then it will come in with the NDI camera right here. So then that way you would turn that camera on, turn your audio off here and the audio will come with the video and you won't have to worry about a sync delay from that. Now again, remember your NDI cameras are not going to match your wired cameras. Those are things that you need to consider. This has been a look at how to connect NDI devices to the Yolo Box Ultra. My name is Anthony Barocas for Stream Tech. If you found this video useful, share it. It'll help other people too. Thanks for watching.